I'm over here with Scott. We got our stuff. We're on the hunt. Guess what movie we're here for? We're on a hunt. Take a guess. Take it. Take it. Take a little guess. You need a clue? Well, as you see, there are approximately eight, nine signatures on there. A lot of glare over there, uh, though. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Mr. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, there's this Mr. Mr. Gulliger. Oh, yeah. Uh, on that one, too. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. Missing You're missing a lot. You're missing one more, so I know. let's go see if we can find him, huh? Well, we're the on the hunt. Is, the word is here. He's here, so we'll see. He's supposed to show up for tonight. He's going to do the Q&A. That's right. Carolyn Williams just showed up. Lynette Quigley's already here. Luckily, we've already met her, so that's cool. Well, that's cool. true. But, yeah, but yeah. she's always a lot of fun to talk to. That's right. So let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's here it is. New Adventures for 2019. <laughs> that's, right. that's right. That's <laughs> right. Scott's on the other side. I'm going to the front. We're trying to find this guy. Where is he? I mean, he's 91 years old. He's gonna walk a little slow, so we gotta give him, you know, we gotta forgive him a little bit. So let's see if he's out here anywhere. Oh, yep, he's here. Got him. He's here. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. I'm, I'm, I have to get a, I'm, I have a lot of reserved seats to get. I What's really that? appreciate it, sir. That looks good. Look at that. That's a good Woo! poster. Isn't that great? <laughs> Not because in that. I'm on it, but because <laughs> I love me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Actors are all like. Show information. Hi. If I may. Oh, this is, which, is this a good one? Yes, sir. Before you have to run off, can I get a photo with you? What's your name? Scott. How you spell it? S-C-O-T-T. -T. <laughs> okay, thank you. Look at that. Blue? That's awesome. Can I get a photo with you really quick? You're never satisfied with just 10 signatures. You got to go with, with 11, right? No, it was only six this time. Oh, only six? Oh, okay. Yeah, we're down, you know, a little. Oh, it's so dark. You can see, see Joel Shepard's right in the middle, so have him do it right on top. Okay, perfect. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Is this return of the or something? Oh, there's Bert himself right there. That's uh, not a bad question, Bert. You know, he, he leaves him alone for a while. Look what happens. <laughs> Freddy, goddamn Freddy. <laughs> I'm going to knock his fucking block off. <laughs> I always love that one. I was trying to think of all the F-bombs in the movie. I'm like, oh, there's so many of them. Yeah. He's going to learn. Who's going to learn a lot today? He's, he's gonna grow a beard by the end of the screening. <laughs> he's gonna look like me when, at the end of the movie. As I understand it, the uh, the one between uh, Frank and uh, Freddie mm -hmm. was improvised. It, 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 feel, it looks like. Watch your tongue, boy. If you like this job, like this job. <laughs> I love that line too. It's genuine. It makes sense because it, no, yeah. it really. It made, like he's like really pissed off. Like, What's his favorite line for the movie? Okay, I'm curious. Oh, we'll do. <laughs> well, I can't see it. There is people up on top there. I don't know. It's the one place we've never been. What's that? We've never been on top. We haven't? Nope. Oh, yeah. oh, the very top. Very top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you meant the top back row, but yeah, you're right. Well, like, well, there are other tops to be on the top. T-shirt cannons never make it that far. No, you know? they do not. That's the thing. It's like, those are the good ones. Anything up back there. Yeah. No chance. For anything, yeah, you need at least the first three to four rows for a t-shirt cannon. Is it? So right in the bag's good? Yeah. yeah you got no room. How you doing, Mr. How you doing, sir? Hello, everybody. Oh, 
Look at this blue ink on right here. It's all covered up with other signatures, but it's missing you. I think we have to put it in the bag. There's no more room in the front if you don't mind. I belong in the bag. That's not true, sir. What's your favorite line from the movie? My favorite line is uh, you told me that uh, you told me that uh, I forget. You told me I don't I don't remember. You remember what he's trying to say? For which one? He's trying to say his favorite line. He's like you told me. I don't remember line. Yeah. That's funny. That's probably not hard. It's hard. Yeah. Oh, and when he shoot the kill the bur shoot the brain. Is that, what is that the part? In the movies? Yeah, you told me something, but I forget the line. Okay, yeah. So that's my favorite line. And you mean okay. the movie's lied? <laughs> that's I love right. Yeah, that's it. That's it? <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I also like the line that the guy wrote about the animals who were moving in the bag. Oh, huh? Remember oh, the rabid dogs? weasels. <laughs> rabid weasels. I like that line. That's a good one, too. Oh, he, he was a good writer. Absolutely. Really? Down yeah, he was great. Good writer. They said the lines um, with uh, Tom Matthews, and uh, he was like, watch your tongue, boy, if you like this job. And he goes, like this job? Are you kidding? <laughs> they said that was, that was improv. <laughs> you guys don't know about this and I do. <laughs> We're going to watch it again, so it'll be a refresher. There you Thank go. You so much. Awesome. Our Thank you. Okay, Thanks, great. <laughs> as, we, as we work our way through all the colors. There you go. There you go. Awesome. Thank you so much. Ooh, you bet. Thank you, thank you. That was awesome. Absolutely. Clue go. giving his time and just sitting and telling stories. I know. I, thought, I wish I would have. The only thing is, I wish you would have brought Nightmare on Elm Street, too. Dude, I'm going to, yeah. I wish I would have. And for Clue Gulliger. Out of anything I packed up. Maybe if you go, it's a double feature. Maybe if you go home, come back and bring it. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> All right, crew. It was about to finally start in like five minutes. Yeah. Are you ready? Hey, what are you doing? Oh, get out of here. So we're in the theater. Crew's already eating popcorn, soda, Kit Kats. He's wired up. You need to go to the restroom or anything? Are you good? I'll try. Huh? I'll go just in case. Okay. All right. Well, he's leaving now. See you. Look at that. That is awesome. Yeah, we got to wear his hat. How cool is that? Yeah. What do you say? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, can I say just one thing? Thank you for coming. Uh, we had a friend uh, who loves this theater uh, and who loved the New Beverly Cinema and uh, the Sister Theater and Santa Monica, uh, Santa Monica Vista Theater and the Billy Wilder Theater, but especially the New Beverly Center. And he was a friend of some of our people here tonight, uh, and myself. His name is Freddie uh, Sinclair. Gillette. We call him Freddy, and I just want to, I'd like to personally, uh, if, you, if, if, if you would let me dedicate this uh, screening uh, of these two films to Freddy. He would give anything to be here tonight, maybe he is here, uh, I, I don't know, but uh, the people who know him, including myself, I wish we could just say hello to him. Uh, Maybe we just say, uh, Freddy, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, could we all say that, the guy that, who know him? Okay, ready? And go. Freddy, you, you son of a bitch! Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Clue. I just want to point out, Freddy was one of the best patrons we ever had. He always brought CD soundtracks for the projections of the booth to play before the movies. Freddy's a great guy. We're going to miss him. Thank you, Clue, for that beautiful tribute. And now, although she was not in this film, she will be in the next film. Get your chainsaws wrapped up for Miss Caroline Williams! Like I said, 
She has not been to the Egyptian theater since the Hollywood Chainsaw Hooker's career, which has probably been 30 plus years ago. So give it up for the one and only Trash LeMay Quickly! things a little different instead of doing separate interest things. I think we have a lot of royalty here. Like cinema royalty. So I just want to have everyone up here together. How do you guys think of that? So I guess we'll, we're just starting to return to the big because that's what we watched. Clue, I don't know how to ask you any questions because how many Q&As have you done for this at this point? Oh. A8. <laughs> yeah, uh, actually, uh, these folks know more about uh, return number one than uh, Lynette and I. I'm sure you know more than we do, actually. Actors never know what's going on, you know, we're just <laughs> dumb assholes. But we have, <laughs> we have a, a fond memories, great memories of Dan and uh, uh, James Karen and Don Kelfer, who are not with us now, but, uh, and Tom, Tom's here tonight from the New Beverly, his mother is not here with us anymore, but she came to every screening uh, for years and years at the New Beverly with Tom and all of us, and Paul is not here, you know, and, and, and who's the guy, the, the grip that I like so much. Well, I forget, but he's not here. So uh, every, <laughs> everyone's dying off, and uh, I wonder who's next. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. Okay. You're scaring me, Clue. Help! <laughs> We're still standing there. Uh, let, any questions because uh, Lynette, do you remember anything that that, that they don't know about? <laughs> they know so much. This crowd is so knowledgeable on this particular film. I, 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 there's not a joke that we said they didn't they didn't laugh out one second before it was said because they knew what was going to be said. It's an amaz amazing bunch here tonight. And we, we do appreciate your, your, your liking the film. We... Well, I've kept a few things secret for the book. <laughs> yeah, I, I read yeah, that. Yeah, I'm going to keep a few things secret to let them know what really happened. Well, yeah. they know most of it, but I know just a couple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so you're working on a book, Linnea? <laughs> yeah, I am going to work on a book, and, and instead of the other ones that were not tell-all, I'm not scared anymore. Fuck them. <laughs> Yay! So, this is a question for all three of you. What was it like making movies during this era of the 80s? Because like this was, you know, effectively the, one of the biggest horror booms ever, and like so many classics that are still loved and people come to every repertory screen we do. You know, Evil Dead came out of this, Evil Dead 2, Day of the Dead, Reanimator. What was it like working like in the genre boom of the 80s? Because Clue, you also did Nightmare on Elm Street 2, and you did the well, hit. I, I just know. All I know about the actors that I worked with, we had two of the best, uh, uh, most memorable uh, method actors in, in America at that time, Lynette here and Tom Matthews. They were, you know, the brilliant performers. Uh, this girl has been caught, like a lot of great artists, in a trap, and uh, she was trapped in the horror genre. So was Boris Karloff, and so, you know, so great actors were trapped in this genre. And when I say trapped, I only say that because you don't get the money. The money goes to the A film, of course. Uh, someone like O'Bannon, who was 
as they say, probably a genius, who wrote this script. There, there, were, there are not many faults in this script that I can see. Two of the best scripts I have ever read, my family and I considered Alien and Return to the Living Dead, two of the finest, uh, almost perfect uh, uh, manuscripts for cinema that e ever written in America. They say, well, they're minor films. Uh, Alien certainly wasn't a minor film. It wasn't a major, major production, like, you know, Little Foxes and so forth. But it struck a chord. And when John and I, this filmmaker, son of mine, read the Alien script, it was just flawless. And it was written by Dan and another guy. And it's too bad he died, because there's no telling what he would have produced in his lifetime. You know, it would be amazing to know what, what that guy could have produced. His words were like William Goldman. Flawless. Well, and I, what was your experience like working during the 80s and like all these different films and like, because you did this, you did All Night of Demons and countless others? I had a really good time. I was just glad to be working and I love horror. And, and we made more money. And, and yeah, you know, made more money and stuff like that. But uh, I didn't really think about it. I just wanted to work and everything, and I had fun. Especially on Return of the Living Dead, I had a lot of fun. Because of Clue, because of Don, who I went on and did another movie with. It was just a fun time, and I loved the horror, the practical effects, and everything, too. How about you, Caroline? Same thing, I loved the practical effects. It made acting less like acting and more like living in the moment. Um, and especially on my film, we had Tom Savini doing our special effects. And they were, yeah, they were genuine works of art. And um, just the application of those effects was, was it was incredible. One of the things I also loved about Linnea's performance um, in her film that I also compare to mine is they're very athletic roles for women. You're moving around, you're going, you're jumping, you're screaming, you're yelling. I mean, it's really, that's what makes it fun when you get to work in a truly physical way like that. Tell me about the audition you did, how you got that part. I heard that story. Four lines. I'm going to say it in four lines. <laughs> because now I've told this story so many fucking times that I can tell it. I can tell this story in four lines, but you're sweet. Okay. Um, ran down the hall screaming into the audition room. Pulled the chairs out from under Toby and Kit and barred the door with them. Oh my God. <laughs> Backed into a corner, shaking, saying they live on fear, they live on fear. Got high. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's the way you do it. <laughs> In this town, anyone that comes to Hollywood, I take my hat off to them. We are looking for the poetic, the poetic existence that they see on the screen, and it is poetry, and some is better than others, and I, I feel that there are great artists in film, and I do feel, feel that uh, this will change, the film will totally change within the next hundred years, we won't know it. We won't, we won't be here, but it will change. So some of you will be close to the, the big changes that occur, and you won't even recognize it. It'll be absolutely different than what we have right now. That's just what I think, John. I may be full of baloney, but that's what I, I've begun to feel. It is, yeah, <laughs> there's a huge change happening in this town. And you can eat at uh, Mary's Hamburger Stand in West Hollywood. <laughs> and get some good hamburgers. But that's not what it's all about. <laughs> it's all about art and what artists do and what, what we do with the poetic words that the, the writers give us.
Boom. Boom. I don't know where you store this well of knowledge, but I, I appreciate it and everyone here appreciates it. Seriously. Oh. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, good. Yeah. So, Lene, like, do you remember, so you replaced, you also replaced someone on Return of the Living Dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, as the 80s went on into the night, how did you end up picking or choosing the roles you ended up getting? Like all the, because you were in this, Night of the Demons, and Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers, and Savage Streets. Like, was there, were you searching for stuff, or were you just? How did I pick them? Yeah. Well, they just picked me, I think. Um, yeah. They wanted you. Yeah, they, it just, like, happened. I don't know how. Just like when I'm acting, I don't know the words or whatever kind of carry you. Don't you think? Everyone in town knew that uh, quickly it was uh, Lynette. Lynette Lanier was one of the great acting artists. And why she never pulled out and became uh, one of the great uh, artists of our time in motion pictures, I will never know. I don't understand those things. I don't try to understand them. But when I see her work in, in almost drudge material, and she comes out like an angel, it just, it just, it, it just floors me. She's a very gifted woman, this woman, and uh, you're looking at one of the great actors uh, of our day. Even though she does what they call screen cream, it doesn't matter what she does. She puts her soul into it. Yay! Yeah. Uh, that made me cry. I'm like, oh my god, wow. And you also did a workout video. Yes, I did the workout video. <laughs> Everybody else was doing one. Why can't the horror people have one? It, it is an awesome fucking video. I have that video. Why not? You do it, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you're in good shape. But do you wear leg warmers, Cliff? What'd you say? Do you wear leg warmers when you do it? <laughs> oh, okay. I was in Marine Corps and lost my hearing in the Marine Corps, so I don't hear things. I hear wonderful things, but they're not what people say. <laughs> so John has to translate for me, and sometimes uh, the man sitting here, Patrick, the great filmmaker, making a documentary of, of my life, and he, he, trans he translates for me. And uh, it, it, it's... Uh, Something that's too bad. War is not good. I hope none of you have to go to war much. I talked with Scott. He was in the war, hurt his leg tonight. He's here. And, and I appreciate the work that he did in the war, but he was all fucked up. And it, it, it's not Ooh. good. <laughs> so, I gotta figure out a transition, but Caroline. <laughs> We, one of the things we talked about because we got to hear the really great Rocky Erickson song during James Karen's big scene in Return of the Living Dead. We got another Rocky Erickson song. So you're from Texas. Crazy, crazy mama. Yeah. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre too. Um, the great thing about Rocky is Rocky translates across generations. I know musicians in LA now who are big um, admirers of Rocky Erickson, his songwriting, his guitar playing the way he used to sing. Um, they're also inspired by his struggles because he was diagnosed with schizophrenia when he was 21. And he went in and out of um, uh, institutions for a long time uh, where, where treat, treatments were really primitive and barbaric. Uh, Thorazine and, and electroconvulsive therapy and things like that, but it did not take away or diminish his creative gifts. And he continued to write, he continued to try to perform uh, throughout the rest of his life, but he had some remarkable hits in 1966. Uh, he wrote, You're Gonna Miss Me, and recorded it. Yeah, and for a Texas artist, it just it was so surf guitar. It sounded like something the Beach Boys would have played. Um, but his inspirations led Billy Gibbons ultimately to form ZZ Top, and uh, Don Henley to form the Eagles, and um, so many artists in Texas and in the 70s, which is when I came of age, I didn't know who Rocky was, but I knew who the 13th floor elevators were. And I knew what an inspiration that band was to so many different bands as musicians began to flock to Texas and just start playing with all the various combinations of music. 
that they were finding in that region. It wasn't just three chord rhythm and blues anymore or country music. It was morphing and turning into something else entirely. And uh, it was just an exciting time to be involved in music in Texas. And the fact that Rocky's legacy continues and he still provides inspiration um, for so many artists. Uh, it's, it's wonderful that that through line exists between the two of our movies. You know, they're kind of married through that musician and it's, it's a lovely thing. So I'm going to just open up for the audience for a little bit. You guys okay with that? Yeah. All right. Anyone got any questions? Right there. Okay, only one because it was really scary. They dug the pit for me and they buried me in it. He's like, they were kind of hillbilly guys. I don't know if you remember, but they were kind of like, I don't know, just different. <laughs> what, was there a box down there? No, there were just no box. They just start burying me and I had to hold my breath and have to think they had to cue the rain machines and then they had to, you know, call speed and then action. And I'm down there not breathing, not hearing. And I just had to, without slipping, come up. And I said, okay, I'm doing it in one. And I luckily got it in one. <laughs> I was lucky. <laughs> All right. Anyone else? Right there. Uh, that was the interior of the three, the giant uh, three-floor press building for the Austin American Statesman. And Kerry White was our art director, and he went into it, a, 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 a press facility where they create newspapers. It's not the size of a standard, say, office floor. It's roughly double in size. So it was more like a six-story building. And what Kerry did is he went inside and he sprayed gunite through the entire facility to cover everything and make it all sort of one color. And then he literally constructed what, what we called it the catacombs, multi-levels of bridges, tunnels, um, culver, uh, culverts. It, 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 was a, it was an extraordinary place. I would walk into that set every morning and it was a wonderland. I felt like Dorothy in a very, very dirty Oz. <laughs> and um, it was just a playground. It was so, it reminded me of watching Linnea play her role. Running and jumping and playing and rolling around in the dirt, getting dirty. And I loved it. I just felt like a kid. I had the time of my life. Until it got up to 130 degrees inside and a corner of it caught on fire. But they were ready for that stuff. We were shooting in the summer. We didn't wrap until July 4th. And um, got hot in there. So yeah, that was Carrie White. How did they keep you so cool, though? Oh, they didn't. <laughs>
Like, that sounds pretty cool. At least to me, anyways. I don't know. Um, his mom's probably like, "What were you digging?" So I'm glad you guys came to visit. Absolutely, no, thank had you. Had a wonderful time. Yeah. Definitely watch the video. Yes. And uh, yeah, subscribe. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Yes. Yeah, because there's more up. videos coming out. That's right. Back on the feet again. We're going to be out yeah. having more oh, stuff. So. Oh, we're getting cut out. We got to go. See ya. Check it out, guys. The, Bur the Baskin Robbins here in Burbank turned into a Scoops Ahoy from Stranger Things. You can uh, all aboard the USS Butterscotch and all the different flavors. I guess they got certain items in there as well from uh, the show, like magnets and cups and things like that. I guess all the Funko sold out already, but I have to go check out Scoops Ahoy Ice Cream Parlor. Sure, from Hawkins, Indiana to Burbank, California. Let's check it out. like Spongebob. <laughs> so I tried the 11's Heaven. It's like waffle co coated chocolate goodness. It's so good. And then I got a couple of their couple of their cups there but all the magnets and the uh, Steve Funko Pop were sold out so had to get had to get um what I could get so I'll show you guys what I got later but it's still this is freaking delicious so like I said before they were all sold out of most of the items at uh, Baskin Robbins like the stickers and the magnets and the Funko Pop of Steve but I was able to collect get for the collector cups See that Scoops Ahoy ice cream parlor, Stranger Things season three. Much on Netflix, so I got that one, and also got Stranger Things are happening at Baskin Robbins. So they had four of them that came out. That's like the cover from the first one there. And this one right here. So I covered all four of them, were like $6.99 for all four. I asked them if they had anything else um, Stranger Things related, and they said all we have is these pints. So, you know, I'm like, you know what? I'll take them. That's all you guys got? I'll take them. So, that's it. That's what I ended up getting there. <laughs>